Hello my friends and welcome back to the Ironclad Line channel. It's time we talk about the game Star Sector. Star Sector is one of my favorite games of all time, and I've played it for hundreds of hours over many years. I got the game back in 2015 and have really loved watching development and trying out the new updates. I finally got Shadowplay to record Star Sector properly, so I'm looking forward to making videos and hope you enjoy my first video of Star Sector. So this series will be both a tutorial and and walkthrough of Star Sector, aimed at showing the basic mechanics and getting new players started with the game. I'll be starting a brand new campaign, entirely vanilla with no mods enabled, and explaining game mechanics as we play. I'll be splitting the videos into chapters so you can easily navigate between the sections that interest you the most. Some mechanics may come naturally to you, while others may be a bit more confusing, so we'll tackle each one of them piece by piece. Now let's get started. You've booted up Star Sector and are presented with the wonderful main game screen. If you are a brand new player to Star Sector, I suggest first doing the beginner tutorials in the Tutorials tab. These will teach you how to control your ship as well as command your fleet in combat. I may make guides in the future covering specific game mechanics in detail, however, we will not be covering basic combat controls in this video. We're going to start our adventure in Star Sector by clicking on the New Game tab. At this new screen, we'll need to fill out our domain identity chip, which is how we'll be known in the sector. Let's start by choosing how we look. There are many different portraits to pick from, representing spacers of different backgrounds, genders, and professions. Star Sector is a role-playing game at its core, and you are free to play however you like. The portrait you choose will not affect gameplay, but it cannot be changed later, so choose wisely. For this playthrough, we'll be playing as our old friend, the Brigador. If you haven't played Brigador, give it a try sometime. It's a great game. Now that we have our portrait, we'll need a name. There is a button for both the portrait and name to be randomly selected. If you are having trouble coming up with a character name, it can help to have one randomly generated to get the brain juices flowing. We of course will be captaining as Mr. Vanilla Tutorial. Now that we have our identity established, let's figure out the rest of our settings. The game has what is called Iron Mode, which prevents you from quick saving and reloading an old save. By enabling Iron Mode, you give up the ability to reload an old save, which is how the game is meant to be played. For your very first playthrough, I suggest keeping this disabled, but since this is the Ironclad Lion channel after all, we're going to have Iron Mode on. Help pop-ups you should absolutely have on while you are learning the game, as they will help you understand the game's mechanics as you encounter them. While the core worlds of the sector are always pre-established, the outer planets are randomly generated. The sector size setting lets us choose if we'd like a smaller sector or the normal sized one. Smaller should only be used if you are running star sector on a potato, as normal is the intended size. Sector Age is a little more complicated. This will determine the composition of the outer constellations. I highly suggest leaving this on mixed, as it will provide you with the most varied experience. Finally, there is the Domain Sector Registry ID, which is an immersive way of saying Sector Seed, or the code assigned to your sector generation. You can leave that alone for now. Looks like we're all good to go on this page, let's continue. We're given a measly 2,000 credits and must choose what our most recent occupation was in the sector. In the current version of Star Sector, which is 0.95.1a at the time of this video, we are given 5 starting options. Option 1 and 2 are the classic starting options, with 1 being a combat focus vessel and 2 being a small but capable freighter. Option 3 and 4 were added later for a faster and easier start to the game. Option 3 gives you a large exploration focus cruiser, the Apogee, and Option 4 starts you with a hammerhead destroyer with a small marine company aboard. Great for raiding parties. Option 5 is the true wildcard start where you will be given a random assortment of starter ships. For demonstration purposes, we will be starting with the classic Space Cowboy start as the Bounty Hunter in a Wolf Class Frigate. In addition, you may choose a companion vessel as part of the classic start. The differences between these two options extend past the ship selection. Option 1 includes a very humble kite class shuttle, but under the command of an experienced officer, which will greatly help in combat. Option 2, on the other hand, comes with a shepherd class drone tender filled with a cargo of heavy machinery. While not as useful in combat, the shepherd and the heavy machinery will assist in salvaging operations, letting you gather more materials and restore salvage vessels 
vessels into working condition. We'll be selecting the kite and officer for this playthrough. Next up, we'll be selecting the difficulty of our campaign. Normal is the intended way for the game to be played, and easy is great if you are a first-time player who is just getting the hang of things. Let's take a look at the differences between these two modes. While normal difficulty is the default with no modifiers, let's see what changes with easy difficulty. All ships in your fleet take 25% less damage, sensor range is increased by 500, and salvage is increased by 50%. Really, these are not massive differences in the gameplay, and I highly recommend easy difficulty for your first campaign. Taking 25% less damage will make combat easier for sure, but the other two boosts will only make your life slightly easier. The game by default is designed to be challenging, so there's no harm in taking your first playthrough slowly, so you can learn all the mechanics. The biggest thing separating a good Star Sector player from a bad one is really just knowledge. Once you learn how the game works, normal is the way to play. But once again, it's highly suggested you play on easy while you are learning. For this video, we'll be playing on normal difficulty to better demonstrate the challenges you may face. There is also a campaign tutorial which we'll be playing through as part of this series. This is essential for newer players and also highly recommended for any players who have not played the game in several updates. When I first started playing Star Sector, many years ago, this campaign tutorial had not been implemented yet. It's very well made and still gives you plenty of freedom to forge your own path. So here we are, our two little ships out in the sector with very few supplies. In Star Sector, your fleet must carry supplies to maintain and repair your ships. If you completely run out of supplies, your ships will no longer be repaired and will fall apart, making supplies an essential resource for your fleet's ongoing survival. Luckily, we have the ability to scavenge for more supplies and debris fields and from derelict ships. Heavy machinery is required to scavenge efficiently, and luckily we start with a small amount. Let's get over to that debris field, which we'll do by left-clicking on the screen. Star Sector is played from a top-down perspective on a two-dimensional plane to simplify the navigation of space. Once in the debris field, we'll press space to pause the game, then press the 6 key to use the scavenge ability. We are now at the salvage screen and must determine if our scavenging effort will be worth it. Pay attention to the highlighted text in each paragraph. It is likely that we'll find something of value and there's significant risk involved. Let's assess the situation in detail. We only have half the required crew and only a third of the required heavy machinery to pull off a fully effective salvage operation, leaving our scavenging effectiveness at 24%. Even though we are are under equipped, we're desperate for any and all resources, so we'll begin the salvaging operations. We'll then be taken to what I call the loot screen to see what we are able to find. Looks like we are able to acquire supplies, fuel, heavy machinery, and metals. While we are on this screen, let's go over a few useful controls for managing your inventory. Left click will pick up a full stack of items. Shift and left click will pick up a single item from a stack, and control plus left click will instantly transfer an entire stack. You may also notice that the buttons on the user interface have a highlighted letter next to them. These letters are the hotkeys to those buttons for quickly navigating the menus. The metals we found are of much lower priority than the other resources, as they are not worth much and take up a lot of cargo space. But since we have enough cargo space for now, we'll pick them up. You will not suffer any penalties as long as you work within your cargo limit. We'll press F5 to quick save and advance the tutorial to the next stage. Looks like we've got a pirate fleet approaching. Pirates will sometimes leave booby traps and debris fields and derelict ships, and will ambush your fleet if you trigger them. Engaging in combat will reduce your ship's combat readiness, or CR, which will take supplies to recover. Combat can therefore become expensive if you are not careful about your deployment. For the purposes of learning, we must fight this shoddy rushed bucket, which will be your first taste of true combat in the sector. Whether or not you plan on making a career out of combat in Star Sector, it is essential to know how to defend your fleet from attackers. From a distance, the pirate fleet shows shows up as a generic sensor contact, and we can begin to see their detection range as a circle. As they move closer, we're able to see the ships within the enemy fleet. As they get very close, we can positively identify them as a hostile pirate fleet. Once the fleet circles touch on the map, the fleet encounter screen will pop up. In this screen, we can evaluate the enemy fleet, and may select from several options on how to proceed. Let's go through each of them. Option 1 is open a comlink, which will let us communicate with the pirate fleet. This can sometimes be an option if you think you can talk your way out of a fight, but will usually require a bribe of some sort. 
and will also reveal your identity. Option 2 will have us move to engage in a head-to-head -head battle, which is the option you'll pick most frequently if you think you can win. Option 3 will attempt to retreat your fleet from battle, a risky option, but better than a full fleet wipe if you are outmatched in the engagement. Option 4 is a special option which can instantly disengage your fleet, but requires a story point. Story points are acquired over time by gaining experience and leveling up, and we'll talk more about them later, but for now, that option is not available to us. We'll be moving to engage the hostile fleet. We are then given the option to transfer command, which lets us switch our piloted ship for the engagement, or continue with our selected flagship. By pressing continue, we'll be piloting our wolf-class frigate, while our officer pilots the kite for this engagement. As the battle begins, we'll be taken to the fleet deployment screen. Every additional ship we deploy will cost us in supplies after the battle, but losing a ship in battle will cost far more to recover, so weigh your options and choose wisely. We'll be deploying both our wolf frigate as well as the kite at the beginning of the battle. The projected recover cost of this deployment will be 7 supplies, but the good news is we won't have to worry about that till after the battle. Now that we have our ship selected, let's hit the deploy button to get them onto the battlefield. We can then press tab once we are on the field to open up the command screen. We won't spend too much time here, as much of this is covered in the fleet command tutorial. There are a number of specific orders you can give to your ships which are shown in the bottom right. Each order will display exactly what it does if you scroll over it, so take your time to familiarize yourself with them. Giving an order uses a command point, which you only have a limited quantity of. Command points represent your ability to command your fleet effectively, and can be boosted through a number of means, including whole mods and through the leadership skill tree, which we'll talk about later. Command Command points regenerate over time, but it's still important to use them wisely. Since this is a very small battle, we don't need to issue a special command. Without any orders, your ships will do what they think is best and engage the enemy on their own. Now let's dive into combat. I won't be going over every detail of combat right away as that could be an entire video on its own, so we'll just give some helpful tips as we go. The first being that you can always pause the game with spacebar if you need time to think and always make sure you are locked onto your target by pressing R. This will make sure your automated guns prioritize that target, your missiles are locked, and you can see where the armor is weakest on the target ship. You can zoom in and out of combat with the scroll wheel, based on if you need a bigger picture of the battlefield, or if you are trying to make some precise shots on target. In this battle, you'll see me zoom in so I can get a clear shot on the enemy ship's engines. With enough landed shots, this will cause a flame out rendering the enemy ship engines useless for a period of time. This is an incredibly effective way to disable enemy ships and make them a far easier target for your fleet. Once the last ship of the enemy fleet is destroyed, we'll be taken to the post-battle screen. Our relationship with the pirates will decrease for engaging in combat, which is inevitable, so don't worry about that. We're also able to pull a small amount of credits from the enemy CPU cores. Next, we'll be taken to another loot screen and can salvage the destroyed enemy fleet. This was just a single ship, so there isn't too much to take. Enemy weapons have a chance of being salvaged as well, so we'll make sure to grab those. Next, we'll grab the fuel and supplies, as those are essential resources. Oh, but what's this? We've taken more salvage than we can carry. If you are over capacity, it'll cost you considerably more resources per day to maintain the excess as well as slow down your fleet. You will almost never want to be over cargo capacity unless you are very close to a station where you can sell the excess. So what do we do? We're going to dump our metals because in the grand scheme of things, the metals are not worth much. Metals are only 30 credits a unit, while heavy machinery is worth 150 credits a unit. So we'll make sure to grab all the heavy machinery we can and leave the scrap metals. You may also notice there are a number of buttons for both sorting your inventory and separating resources by type. Not so much much an issue in the early game, but once we start gathering up weapons and other loot, we'll want to keep things organized. Now that the combat is over, we'll need to deal with the supply recovery cost. We'll need to pay for the deployment cost, as well as any physical damage our ships took while in combat. Both of these will take supplies to recover, and will happen over time. If we are tight on supplies and wish to save our supplies for maintenance, we can pause repairs for any or all ships in our fleet. To do this, we'll head over to the fleet screen. We have a number of options here. The question mark will display all the information about the current vessel. Scuttle 
will dismantle the entire ship for a few resources, only to be used in emergency situations. Mothball will lower the combat readiness of the ship all the way down to 0%, but the ship will no longer take supplies to maintain. Useful for when you have just looted a ship, but want to wait to repair and refit it at a station. We can also suspend repairs of any ship in the fleet with the cross over the wrench icon. If you needed to do this fleet-wide, you can also use the Q and W keys. Suspending repairs is rather uncommon and should only be used when very low on resources. With the battle concluded, we have gained a hefty amount of experience, and Mr. Vanilla has leveled up. We've been given a skill point to spend as well as some story points. Since Star Sector is an RPG, it's about time we talk about building our character. Let's go ahead and smash that F5 button and quick save to advance the tutorial. If you have a skill point to spend, the character tab in the bottom left will flash with a plus icon next to it. So we've gained a level. Good job, us. You'll get one skill point per level up, as well as an additional point when we begin a new campaign. Story points in green are acquired as we gain experience, and we'll get multiple story points per level. Story points are used in a variety of ways to perform special actions within the game. Skill points, on the other hand, are used on skills, or as us gamers like to call perks. There are four aptitudes or skill trees in Star Sector. Combat, Leadership, Technology, and Industry. Each aptitude is broken into tiers, and you unlock higher tiers by learning the lower tiered skills in the tree. Skills that only affect your piloted ship can be given a story point to make them elite, which you'll always want to do if pursuing those skills. The maximum level you can reach by default is 15. I have mine increased to 40, but that only ever comes into effect in very long playthroughs, as it'll take roughly 50 hours of gameplay to reach level 15. Alright, our first look at aptitudes, or skill trees. So once again, we have combat, leadership, technology, and industry. Let's break these down to understand what each aptitude really does for us. The combat aptitude is all about boosting your character's personal abilities and captaining their flagship of choice. These skills are very powerful boosts to your combat ability, but will only boost your flagship, and won't help you at all on the campaign map. This tree is for the captain that wants to be an ace pilot, and loves taking out entire enemy fleets by themselves. For this playthrough, we'll take the helmsmanship skill, and make it elite with a story point. This will give a large boost to the speed and maneuverability of our flagship in combat. We'll learn the skill by clicking on it, then making it elite by clicking on it a second time. We can then see the stars and highlighted border around the skill, showing that it is elite. The leadership aptitude has several powerful fleet-wide boosts, as well as skills that increase the effectiveness of your officers. For the captain who wants skilled subordinates at their side, who can handle their ships competently. The technology aptitude has probably the greatest variety of fleet-wide, flagship, and campaign map skills to offer. Captains who specialize in the technology tree will have many more tools at their disposal to weaken enemy fleets and deploy superior tech both in battle and on the campaign map. The industry aptitude is dedicated to the smooth operation of your fleet and salvage operations. Captains who specialize in the industry tree can enjoy reduced supply and fuel costs, enhanced salvaging, and logistical boosts to both their fleet and colonies. For our second skill, we'll be taking the Salvaging Perk, which will let us salvage significantly more materials from derelicts and additional post-battle loot. If you for whatever reason wish to respec your character, you can do so, but it will cost a story point. You can always wait to allocate your skill points and save them up if you wish. So take your time, look at all the skills available to you, and choose wisely how you want to build your character from the 40 skills. We've received a tight beam communication from one of the inhabited planets in the system, and Syrah. We've been instructed to travel there and contact the station commander, Decker, as soon as we arrive. To do this, we'll need to plot a course, which is essential for navigating the many star systems and planets within the sector. To start, we'll press E to open the intel screen and view the details of our current objective. From there, we can press the show on map button to display in Kyra, and then select lay in course. Or, we can press 
press tab to open the map and locate Ankara with our eyeballs, which I believe is the significantly easier method, but we'll entertain the tutorial and show the first method as well, which is a bunch of rubbish I tell you. Far more likely to get lost trying to do this method. So Intel screen. We see the system we're in, then planets, find Ankyra, location will be in system. Now we have a wonderful picture of Ankyra and the whole solar system because why not? We can press lay in course and boom, it takes us to the system map with a plotted course. We then press tab to close the map. Or we press tab to open the local map, find the planet with the yellow exclamation mark and right click on it to plot a course. Such navigation, much wow. With our course plotted, our fleet will automatically take the most direct path to the destination. But wait, and Kyra's on the other side of the system. It'll take a long time to get there. Luckily, we have the technology. By using the sustain burn ability, we can get there in half the time. To activate a sustain burn, we'll need to stop the fleet briefly, but then we will be able to burn at a significantly higher rate. So see our burn level at 10 currently? Let's activate the sustain burn and see what happens happens. We drop all the way down to a stop, but then slowly build our burn up to 20. Now we're cooking with gas. What's this? An asteroid belt? That could have consequences. Actually, probably not because it's a thin asteroid belt, but we'll have an elderly drive through the belt just for demonstration purposes. At any time while you are traveling, you can press and hold S to slow your fleet down to safely navigate asteroids or debris fields. Let's do that now. Nice and gentle. Once we are through the belt, we can let go of S to return to maximum sustained burn. A sustained burn can be interrupted by an interdiction pulse, but we won't need to worry about that now. We can also hold down the shift key to speed up time, which is crucial when traveling long distances. One last tip for basic navigation. The camera by default is centered on your fleet, and by pressing right Right click, you can unlock the camera and enable free look. This will let you look around and have better situational awareness. Our fleet is getting closer to Ankyra, and before we do anything else, we're going to wrap up episode 1 of our Ultimate Star Sector tutorial and walkthrough. Next episode will begin with our arrival at Ankyra and interacting with the station interface, but since we're already past the 20 minute mark, this is a good stopping point for episode 1. So since this is a new series on a very beloved game of mine, I'd appreciate you smashing those wonderful buttons that help make these videos more visible on the YouTubes and elsewhere. I'm not sure how many episodes this series will end up being, but I have a lot of footage and a lot of information to get through. Episode 1 was pretty dense with basic information, so good job getting through all of it, and I hope you learned a few things. Future episodes will be moving a little faster once I'm done explaining the basics, and we're going to have a good time learning Star Sector together. If you have any questions or would like to give some feedback on the series, I'd appreciate you feeding me comments down in the comments section. If you are familiar with my Conqueror's Blade series, you'll know that in-depth guides can take me several weeks to put together, so each episode will be uploaded when it's done and not a moment sooner. Thanks again for watching all the way through, you've been amazing. I'm Ironclad Lion, and I'll see you in the next episode. Also, more channel links are below in the description if such things interest you. Cheers.